you're sitting behind your desk. I'm Scott Crouch, I'm the CEO of Mark 43. Back in 2012, we were in an engineering research course at Harvard, and we were tasked with helping the state police in Springfield, Massachusetts look at how they were fighting gang crime. And so we went out there, we started working with the cops on the street, we're responding to 911 calls, we're getting into car chases with these officers, we're out there serving warrants, we're working cases with them. And what we realized was that public safety software was about 20 years behind the times. And so what we decided to do was completely rethink the process and reinvent how an officer does everything from arrest someone on the street to how a detective investigates a case to how analysts analyze that information and how they share it between departments. We kept working every single day, every single night on really defining the problem. What type of data did these police officers in Springfield need to collect? What did we need to build? And what we did was spend a lot of time with these officers on the street looking at the data that they had, watching them make arrests, really getting a very client-facing view of what they needed. And what that resulted in was this very simple system that allowed them to collect very basic information and start tracking kind of the evolution of violent crime. And what we wanted to do was help them use data to better their efforts. Let's say you're an officer on the street, you respond to a 911 call, and you make an arrest at that scene, you'll pull out Cobalt, the Mark 43 product and you'll start processing it. You'll do it on a tablet, you can do it in the car, you can do it outside the car. You'll basically process this arrest, which could be hundreds of fields of information on the crime, and you'll do it in minutes. I think when we first saw the prototype being used by the state troopers, and we saw how easy it was for them to process information, we knew that this could be something that could be truly useful across the country. And then eight months after graduation was on Washington DC committed to using the software. We went from a solution for a single team, for a specialized gang unit, to a solution that now powers an entire you know, police department in a major city in America. I come from a family of cops. First responders have always been important to me. It's always been important to give back to them. There's a lot more to police officers in the public sees, and we need to dedicate a lot of our resources as a community to giving them the things they need to do an incredible job. century community policing model involves the police department, community advocates, academic researchers, and the tech community. Measure is proud to join forces on this conference with a tech company that has revolutionized the way several police departments are capturing big data. Joining us here from New York, Scott Crouch, CEO and co-founder of Mark 43. Thank you everyone so much. I think the video said it all. Do I need to actually do a talk right now? No. Uh, but again, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Mimi. Where'd you go? You're right there still. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, uh, Chief Manley. We really appreciate being here. I will, uh, I'll tell a little bit of the story behind Mark 43, and then I really want to get into how we can actually use technology to help police departments work more efficiently, give them better data to fight crime, and then make sure that that data can be made accessible to uh, you know, the public, that you guys can have a lot of the information and see what's going on. So what we really saw when we started uh, about five years ago now at Harvard, it's been a while, it was 21, 20, uh, we really started looking at, this was a class project, I was an electrical engineering major, my focus was actually uh, integrated circuits and crystalline structures in those circuits to allow for faster photon transmission. So not really anything related to policing, but I did come from a family of cops and I was always taught when I was young that police officers do incredible work every day. They do a really hard job and they are truly heroes in their community. And so we got the chance to do a project with the state police in Massachusetts and we jumped on it. We went out there, we went to Springfield, which is you know, a violent city in Massachusetts. They had a lot of gang crime. And the approach that these state troopers were taking was a very community-centric approach. They were sitting in all these community meetings, they were walking around on the streets, they were getting to know all of the influential and respected leaders in the community, and they were building those bonds so that when there was a problem, the people in those communities would feel comfortable going to those state troopers. 
But on the flip side, what we saw was that the systems they had to actually collect that information were horrendous. I'm talking about binders of paper and I'm talking about 20 year old systems that were absolutely terrible. And what we started to do is actually survey the market to see what vendors were out there, what technology they were making. And what we found was that for decades, really police departments had no good options. They were choosing between the lesser of evils. They were choosing from companies that prioritized margins over moving forward, that prioritized revenue over reinvention. And so what we decided to do is really throw it on its head to completely reinvent the way that police departments police departments collect data and how they use that data to make communities safer. So we spent a lot of time with the state troopers. Uh, we built a very small prototype. Uh, it was made by me, so it wasn't that great. So we have a fully professional engineering team now. And we launched it. And what we saw was for those kind of five state troopers that we were working with, that we were actually making a tremendous difference in how they collected the data but also in how they interact with the community because they had real-time data at their fingerprints that would give them the ability to make smarter uh, decisions about you know, who they were arresting, about who they needed to go after. And so that's when we decided that there really was an opportunity to do something larger here. Uh, you know, I never went through college as one of those people who said, I need to start a company because I want to be a CEO. That's the wrong way to think about it, right? You should only start a company if there's a problem that needs to be solved and that really is the only way to solve it. Because at the end of the day, you need to prioritize the impact, not the money you're going to make from something like this. And so we set out, I graduated from school, I moved out to Los Angeles County for about five months, and we started working with more units out there, and we saw the exact same trouble that the state police in Massachusetts were having. It is nothing unique to a single department. Every single department, and not only the United States, but also across the world, faces these data collection issues for one of the biggest reasons that it's actually, it's a hard market to get into. It is hard to get young people coming from Stanford and MIT and Harvard to go into the public safety space, to spend the time, to have the patience, to really dedicate their lives to reinventing this. So we moved out to Los Angeles County uh, and we started to build more of the system out. But what we realized as we started to look at just kind of building out analysis tools for officers was that it was all broken, all the way down to how an officer actually enters an arrest report. That was so difficult for these police. We found in cities across the country, it was taking hours and hours to do a single report. And that's not the fault of the officers, it was the fault of the interface they were using. It was the fault of how the system worked. Uh, you know, I really cannot underemphasize or overemphasize just how clunky these systems were. So we decided that in order to actually move departments into the future, we need to go back. We need to take 100 steps backwards and reinvent the basics. So we started looking for police departments that would work with us. And one of the things that we found was it's hard, right? It's hard to get a city to say, we're going to trust you know, an uh, immature 22-year-old kid, 21-year-old kid, to build a mission-critical system for us. Uh, but what we did find though was there actually was a lot of desire because the need was so great And so as you saw in the video, we ended up partnering with Washington DC Metro Police uh, Really found a phenomenal advocate uh, in a woman named Chief Kathy Lanier uh, You know she at the time was one of the longest serving major city police chiefs in the country very forward-thinking but also very progressive in terms of technology and really wanting to do what was best for her officers in terms of getting them a system that they would find really easy to use and getting them back on the street. So what we did was we embedded ourselves. Uh, the only way to actually reinvent a system like this is to get on the ground. We spent about a year on the streets. Uh, for eight months, I worked with patrol units out in Southeast DC, which is one of the more dangerous parts of that city. We also worked with all the investigative units. We worked with homicide, we worked with sex crimes, we worked with narcotics. And then we worked with crime analysis and records. But even beyond that, we realized we had to work with the downstream data users. We worked with social workers, we worked with the courts, we worked with the jails. We even figured out ways to make sure that the data that was coming from our system could be accessible in a public portal, while still being anonymized, of course, to make sure that the community had access to it. 
And what we did was over the course of only a little over a year, build a system from scratch and launch it throughout over 10,000 users across the DC Metro Police, United States Capitol Police, United States Park Police, uh, and the United States Secret Service. Really making a tremendous difference in the way that policing technology was done in Washington, DC. And so if you look at where the company is now, uh, we're no longer five people. We're about 150 people across four states. And what we've done is build this, for lack of a better term, brain trust around how we work with cops. You know, we have everyone from the armed forces, former law enforcement, the intelligence community, but also experts in software engineering uh, from places like Google and Facebook who are dedicated to this. You know, it's actually really refreshing when you start showing people that there is a, you know, modern uh, technology company that can be an outlet for your desire to help public safety you get incredible talent coming in through the door. You also get diverse talent. You know, we have everyone from the fashion industry to the military to, you know, the film and movie industry. And what that shows you is that there really is a greater, uh, you know, appreciation for this problem and people looking to work on it. So after kind of now we think about uh, what we've done since Washington, D.C., we're working in states across the country, multiple states, with cities like Camden, New Jersey, Seattle, Washington, a lot of cities in Los Angeles County, cities in Oregon, uh, really to bring them into the future. And so that's kind of a little bit now much about Mark 43, and what I really want to go into is how data can really make a difference in community policing. And there's a great quote by Chief Kathy Lanier from DC that says, it's incumbent upon us in public safety to look for best practice. And almost always technology is the gap for us in terms of our ability to keep pace with change. And that's something that we really couldn't agree with more. And so right now what I want to talk about for the next few minutes is how technology does impact community policing. And there are really kind of five uh, takeaways. And so let's go to the first one. And really what that is is that police departments struggle with all types of badly formatted data, data that's hard to access. You know, I think that when people make requests to police departments from data and the response is slow, there's this misconception that they might be hiding something. Really what we've seen is that it is really just that hard to get data out of systems. We have seen police departments where it takes months to correlate a report on certain types of crimes or offenses or incidences. And that's not because it's easy for them to do and they're waiting around, it's actually because they're sitting there doing it by hand in a lot of cases. Because you have vendors who will say, our database technology is you know, proprietary, we're not gonna let you access it with other systems. Or because it literally cannot be exported and the system is mostly free text entry without any validation. And so what we really need to start looking at when we think about how can we use technology to better community police, police community policing, something like that, um, is how do we reinvent the underlying data architecture behind it? And how do we reinvent how systems actually tie into each other? And so here's a great diagram. If you actually look at uh, what kind of police systems look like right now, it's a huge house of cards. So this is a simplified diagram. Uh, this would apply to probably every single one of the 18,000 police departments in the United States, where you have some core systems. Uh, in the center, you may have something called a data warehouse uh, or a data lake house, as we like to call it, where you have an aggregate, aggregate of data coming from multiple systems in there, and then you have other systems pulling and pushing information from that. Then you have two of your other primary systems. One is an RMS, which is a really unsexy name for a records management system, which is how officers enter reports, how you know uh, detectives investigate cases through case management. That information is pulled from the data warehouse or pushed to the data warehouse, then pushed to things like the courts, the jails, uh, external databases. You also have pulls in from other systems like license plate readers, body cameras, uh, you know, your booking information coming from an FBI database called APHIS. Uh, as well as potential uh, warrant information coming in from databases like NCIC that go into things like your CAD. And your CAD, what that stands for is a computer-aided dispatch. So it's your 911 system, and that's how you know dispatchers and call takers 
uh, work with software to actually resource calls that are coming in from reporting parties, and then officers on the street, as well as firefighters and EMTs, use their CAD to actually interact with dispatch and get a lot of, well, in some cases get information, but then show that they're en route to a call, that they're at scene, uh, and they also can then help resource other backup units if necessary. The problem here is that in a lot of cases, there's no single source of truth. So we've seen that, you know, if you're a police officer, and I'm guessing a lot of us have gotten pulled over, uh, I used to have a learner's permit and I got pulled over a few times, don't even have a driver's license now, but um, I haven't learned, it's not because it got taken away or something. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, when a police officer pulls you over and, you know, they take your license and they go back into the car and it takes a while, a lot of times they're just sitting there looking at the computer while a little wheel spins or they're checking eight different databases trying to find any information or they're looking at the same database but there's just 10 versions of you in there and so there really is no single source of truth and that's a huge problem right because that's going to lead to either uninformed decisions or it's going to lead to just really kind of uh, overly complicated investigations because you're trying to keep track of so many things i mean we've seen in some of these clients like they're searching seven sep seven separate databases uh, when they actually look for information coming back. And really that's unacceptable, right? I mean, how many of us watch NCIS or CSI, like the technology in there looks beautiful. Like you can enhance an image to death. Like it just goes on and on and on. None of that really exists in policing. And we have to, I mean, that's impossible, but we have to move forward and bring them at least a little bit into the future. And so that's one of the primary takeaways. The next one is really for focusing on making sure that technology is a force multiplier for police departments. When you want to collect more data, the, not the, the you know, result of that cannot be that officers are spending more time doing police reports. At the same time as you do this, you absolutely need to make sure that, excuse me, you are making it simpler for them to enter in information. So, what we did in Washington, D.C. was we actually did a really thorough analysis of their reporting times both before and after we launched Mark 43 there. And so we were able to take all their old data on their on-premise system, we were able to look at submission time, so when an officer started a police report to when they actually ended it and submitted it to their supervisor for approval. And what we found was that it was taking around 93 minutes to do a single arrest report. So imagine if you are an officer and you have made two arrests in one evening in Southeast Washington, DC, you're out for over three hours, right? Imagine if you've done a arrest and you've done two offense reports, which take, you know, 76 minutes, you could be out for more than half of your shift sitting in a report writing room or sitting in your car uh, on the side of the road, writing a report. And, it's unacceptable, right? Like you can't have that. And there is no single officer, uh, you know, for the officers in the room, correct me if I'm wrong, if you enjoy writing reports in your system. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of shaking heads. Uh, it's really just not something that people should be spending that much time on. So that was one of the biggest things we tracked. And we did that over tens of thousands of reports in their old system. So it's not like we're taking a sample size of 60. We then looked at it for the Mark 43 system. And what we found was that we were cutting their arrest time, their arrest reporting times down by over 50%, and their incident and offense reporting times down by over 80%. And this was a huge workforce multiplier for the DC Metro Police. Uh, it literally gave them back around 240,000 patrol hours a year. That's not insignificant, right? That is the equivalent for them of effectively adding over 110 new police officers to the streets. I mean, it's not the same, right? Because that also increases the ability to have backup and stuff like that. But just in the amount of reporting hours they were doing, uh, it was a significant gain for them. The other thing there was really figuring out a lot of great usability techniques, right? How do you make a system that is actually truly usable in an officer's patrol car? Because uh, right now, if you look at a lot of these vendors out there, what they'll do is they'll sell you a mobile version of it. And their definition of mobile is it works on a laptop of a car. And then they'll sell you a version for your desktop computer in your station, which is the exact same screen size in a lot of cases. And they're separate systems. So as an officer, you have to train on two systems and you have to remember which one does what, because sometimes the capabilities are different when you get in there. And so one of the biggest things we did 
was really look at how do we make a system that is you know, device agnostic and can be accessed anywhere by an officer. That's all in the cloud so they can go home and access it. They can access it on their phone. They can access it on their tablet. They can access it on any station in the computer to make sure that they have the ability to continue their work from wherever they are and access that work from wherever they are. And so that level of usability was absolutely key to thinking about how we get officers to spend more time on the street and less time actually reporting. And so moving forward, one of the things we then did is we surveyed over 1,000 of the DC Metro Police Patrol officers because we wanted to see if our system would actually allow them to do their job more effectively. It's you know actually in the spirit of Measure Austin, it's really one of those things where if you do something, you want to be able to measure the results. You actually want to see if you have great metrics around what you've done. And really, this is the most important one we measure, right? Because every single police officer in this country wants to do a great job out there. They want to do a really effective job. And we wanted to see that if our system would actually make it easier for them to do that. And what we found was that over 50% of those respondents who were surveyed actually gave it a 5 out of 5 for that. And the average for it was about 4.2 compared with 2.2 for their old system. And that let us know that we actually made a substantive change in how they use technology in the city. And so that's kind of the second takeaway. Uh, moving on to the third takeaway is the ability to have great data extraction and great real-time information. And so what I mean by this is that you have in a lot of these systems right now, uh, data that's delayed. So in the way that most police systems work is that an officer will write a report and then it'll sit in something called a transcription queue for about, in some cases, two or three days or longer, depending on the report type. And what that means is that they don't have access to real-time information. So the supervisors, the detectives, the crime analysts, are literally just waiting and waiting or trying to dig something out of a queue because that data doesn't exist right now for the general population of police. And so that's one of the biggest problems with real-time information. The other problem is that it's very, very hard for them to search anything. Uh, you literally have uh, you know, companies in this space that sell separate systems to search your RMS because the RMS is so deficient in the first place that you can't get data out of it. And that's unacceptable, right? I mean, this goes back to in a lot of cases where when police are trying to give great data to the public, in a lot of cases, it's really hard to get out of their systems and it's really hard to access. In some cases, you literally need to have an in-house software developer at the police department to write SQL queries to hit the production version of the database to get any meaningful information. And that's not how current software is designed. And so what we did, first of two things, was really looking at how we can make dispatch smarter to help community policing and how we can also use it to help keep officers safe. So right now, if you look at a lot of uh, you know, dispatch systems and you look at a lot of RMS systems, they're actually using two separate databases. So imagine if any information an officer enters into the records management side, uh, whether it's you know, finding out that you know, a person you interacted with uh, only speaks Spanish or a person you interact with has a mental health condition, none of that data will get to the 911 system. And when you are an officer and you're responding on the street, that 911 dispatch system is your best source for real-time data. Because when you are sitting there and you're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna accept this assignment, you're gonna wanna be able to see everything that you potentially know to both help keep yourself safe, but also to keep the people that you're serving, the community that you're serving safe. So one of the things we did was really intelligent dispatch. So you know what Mark 43's dispatch system can do is that if we know that the person calling 911 is speaking Spanish or they're speaking another language, we can actually say, hey, we know the skills and certifications of the officers we've got. Let's you know, send and dispatch potentially that officer there because it's gonna be more likely uh, to be handled you know, more efficiently and in a better way. One of the things we're also looking at even doing in the future is that if we see that someone has a mental health condition, can we figure out if there is an officer that's interacted with that person before and has a great record of dealing with that individual and recommend dispatching them? And that's never been done before, right? And of course, in a lot of cases, we're not gonna force that dispatch because it's the dispatchers who are the experts and they'll make that call. 
But if we can really sift through those millions of records and say, we know this information from the past, we know that in certain cases an officer has dealt with this person before and they've you know, formed that bond, can we recommend that they go to that call? And that's something that could be really truly powerful and help the safety of both the officers but also help the safety of the public too. Uh, you know, one of the things we also see is that in a lot of cases, uh, you have officers who are potentially going in blind, uh, who don't know that a person they've dealt with has assaulted a police officer before, who has a history of weapons use. And when you have these old on-premise systems, it's really hard to pull that information back out. And so one of the things that our dispatch system will do is immediately if an officer is gonna interact with a person that we have verified information on, we'll flash it directly in red to the officer because that officer is about to go deal with something that's just going to be exceptionally difficult, right? That, you know, uh, they really are heroes in a way that they're going to go do that. And so we need to give the information that we have to keep them safe. The second thing we really look at for this is actually giving really great, powerful search to investigators, analysts, and policymakers. So one of the things that we were very kind of, uh, you know, strict on when we were building Mark 43 is that every single field you enter has to be searchable. Uh, and every single field, you have to be able to export that data to another format. And it has to be accessible in open API. So if the police department has another system they want to use, uh, the data has to flow freely between it. And this goes back again to the fact that we have vendors in this space who you know, really have uh, you know, prioritized profits over progress, and so they like to lock their information down. They think that's their safety net, right? They think that's the way they're gonna keep themselves in a department, rather than saying that I believe my product is great, and if we continuously improve, the department's gonna wanna continue to use it. So they keep their data shielded, they don't let it be accessible in a lot of cases by other systems, and if it is, it's because the department went to really painstaking efforts to make that happen. And so what we said was, all right, let's make sure that the Mark 43 data is available in API, but also let's make sure that there's really powerful search in there for officers and for detectives. So if you're a detective and you are you know, running an investigation, you wanna say, hey, I wanna see if we ever stop someone with a tattoo of a cross who is known to wear an orange T-shirt between five hours before and five hours after this homicide within a 1500 meter radius of this location, you can run that search and it'll search millions of records in about a second or two. And that's what people need in these departments to actually get better data in order to increase the solvability factors of these cases. And we found out that that's been extremely important and extremely helpful. And then the other thing too is just making this data available in an API so that, you know, I think most cities actually do have a public portal where citizens can view crime reports in some cases or crime statistics. Of course, the most important thing there is protecting victim information. But for the data that we can export, we want it to be really easy, right? So the department can share that uh, more easily. So moving forward onto the fourth takeaway, uh, what we found is that we will never move forward in getting great data and data sharing between departments if we don't move to the cloud. Uh, you know, this is something that has been a point of contention in this space mentally. There were always the worries of, you know, is there the right security? Is there, you know, the right reliability and redundancy? What if I lose my internet connection? And what we found though is that if we don't have, uh, you know, departments actually in the cloud working together, we have these silos, right? We have customized uh, individual systems in every single department where the data can't match and the data can't flow. And what happens there then is that uh, you get no data sharing. I mean, all of the police officers know in this room that if they could search someone that they interact with and find out how other police departments have interacted with them, or if there's some record outside of the police department you're in, that can be enormously helpful for how you're gonna deal with that person or if you need to use special procedures with that person. And so that's one of the biggest benefits the cloud gives you, is the ability to do that. And one of the actual most important things there is using something called a multi-tenant architecture. And really what this means is that every department needs the ability to have their own distinct features, their own distinct terminology, 
their own distinct field, right? Austin Police Department will do things differently than Washington DC Metropolitan Police Department. Both are correct in the way they do things, so if you're gonna launch a cloud-based system, they still need to have the ability to do their own special things. And so when we are architecting Mark 43, we realized that if these departments were gonna you know, get the data that they needed, we needed to make sure we had one single code base controlling multiple tenants. So you would have something like you know, seattle.mark43.com and you know, washington.mark43.com, and you would log in, and it would look very different between the two departments, but at the end of the day, it's the same code and it's the same data. And so here's a great example, right? So when you're actually building something for you know, a system like this, it also needs to have great flexibility. And flexibility is going to be absolutely essential in a system if you're going to you know, continue to monitor success over community policing. And the reason why is that there's always gonna be different data you're gonna need. There's always gonna be different data you're gonna have to look at, and you need the ability for a system to be able to collect that. And so the way it's done in old systems is that uh, you know, you're working with an on-premise system, so you have to contact the company. Uh, then you have to pay a $50,000 change order, which can take an act of Congress. Uh, then you're gonna have to wait while the developer says, I'm gonna build this for six months. Uh, then they're gonna put the field in, and then you're gonna realize, great, the time I actually wanted to track it is over, it's no longer relevant. And this is a staple across all policing systems in America right now, uh, except for ours. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, the way that we did it, though, is that we made it so any admin can go into the Mark 43 system, add a field, uh, you know, maybe to say something like, hey, I wanna go in and I'm gonna add a field for any incidents that are related to South by Southwest. The field will automatically appear in the system two days before the event, and it'll automatically leave the system two days after. The officers can fill it in, but then that field still remains searchable even after it's disappeared from the system. So if you guys wanna go in and pull data later saying, hey, I wanna see any event that was related to South by Southwest, you can do that years later without ever having to still see it on a report as a field. And the whole key thing there is that when that flexibility is needed in order to make the best uh, you know, decisions to really look at the right data, the admins and the departments themselves can make that action, can actually put that field in, in about two minutes versus six months. And that actually goes back again to the ability to have real-time data, but the only way that's possible is by putting these systems in the cloud with this level of multi-tenant scalability, which then also allows that information sharing. So even the way that you know, a great system would work is that if you know, a department like Seattle wanted to share information with a department like Portland, we can port that information between those two departments while still keeping all of their terminology and their configuration. And so one last point on the cloud itself is that this allows departments to move forward together. And so right now the way that it works is that if there is a department that has a great idea in technology, it stays and sometimes within that department because it's built in that custom code base. Let's say you have a department that has an amazing idea on you know, how to actually build more community policing tools into software. The way that a cloud-based multi-tenant system works is that if we built something like that, every other department that's on that system can get that feature immediately for free, which increases the ability for just widespread reach of something like this. And with a multi-tenant cloud, you can still preserve the configurations of those departments, which makes it incredibly special. And then the last thing I will say with this is that cities need fresh systems, right? They need the ability to have these systems be upgrading fast, to get new features regularly, and to still have you know, people uh, who are on the ground with their officers. You know, one of the things we're very key about is that even after we launch a system, your commitment to the customer really has only just begun because they need to stay happy on it, but they also need to still feel like you're making progress and they need to still see that your people are dedicated to building new things. Uh, you know, it goes back to what we said in the beginning that if we're really gonna do amazing, cool stuff in technology and policing, we need to fix the way that the very basic things are done first to give access to that data to the officers, to the investigators, to the analysts, to then build much more amazing features. And so by always doing ride-alongs, by always working with the officers, the detectives, the analysts, 
you can push out new things regularly because of the cloud that make it a lot easier for a department system to stay constantly up to date. Uh, one of the benefits of building our system from scratch only about four years ago is that we were able to future-proof it with this methodology. And then the last takeaway uh, I really want to stress is that every piece of data needs to be auditable. Audit auditable. Um, it's a hard word to say. Uh, and really what that means is that there needs to be an easy way to see logs of what's happened to you know, a piece of data over time, to see a history of an individual as they've interacted with a department, to see a history of a police report or a case. And this is hard to do in current software. It's actually hard to view uh, without you know, doing a database query and actually pulling up uh, thousands of rows of database logs. And this is not only the benefit for making sure that the data is high integrity, but it's also the benefit for investigators and officers to see you know, what is the interactions we've had with this person over time, uh, but also then to see how that data is used. And so having really uh, you know, enhanced controls for that information in the system makes it, you know, very, uh, it makes it a very high integrity platform. And so the last thing I will really uh, leave off with is there is a large responsibility on the tech community that I believe has actually not been fulfilled on working with public safety, with working with advocacy, advocacy groups uh, to really start thinking about how we build great software for our police, for our firefighters, for our EMTs, and then how we actually measure the effects of that software on the community. How can we actually see the trickle-down effects of building amazing things for our law enforcement to keep our police officers safe, to give them better tools, but then how do we actually look at the effects of how that's affecting the community positively? And I think this can be done in really amazing ways, and that's why we're partnering with police departments to launch our system, because we aren't running away after the launch. We're working with them to do these case studies to see, you know, do your officers like it? Are we making them more effective? Do they feel like you're giving them more information to stay safe? But also, is this trickling down to the community? Do they see more officers on the streets now? Uh, which is always a great thing because they're spending less time doing reports. And that really is at the core of how we operate at Mark 43, is to look across all of these user groups uh, as we build our platform. Um, thank you so much. I probably went really short there. But uh, I'd love to take any questions if you guys have any. Thank you.